towards the southeast. We'll see areas of rain moving across northwestern areas. Sunshine and showers in the far north, 11 or 12 degrees, maybe 19 across parts of the south and the southeast. And then we get into the weekend. Split fortunes, actually. Frontal systems pushing close to the northwest of the UK, so most likely to see rain across the north and the west. Then down here, we have what by this stage will be the remnants of another uh, Atlantic hurricane, Hurricane Helene. It won't be a hurricane at this stage, but what it will start to do through the weekend is draw in some warm tropical air in our direction. So southern areas actually likely to warm up through the weekend with some spells of sunshine. Further north and west, cooler, quite breezy, with some rain at times. Conservative Brexiteers set out their ideas for how the Irish border might be handled after we leave the EU. They say technological solutions exist and deny that they're trying to unseat the Prime Minister. Theresa May has enormous virtues. She is a fantastically dutiful Prime Minister and she has my support. I just want her to change one item of policy. We'll be looking in detail at how the border proposals might work. Also this evening... President Putin says the two Russians suspected of the Salisbury poisonings are not criminals and that they'll soon tell their story. Tests show E. coli caused the death of a British couple on holiday in Egypt. The disappearing free cash machines, more than 250 are being closed down every month. And Scotland's first museum of design opens on the waterfront in Dundee. And coming up on BBC News, the final countdown, the last preparations underway as Joshua prepares to defend his heavyweight titles. Good evening. A leading group of Brexit-supporting Conservative MPs have put forward proposals on the highly contentious issue of how the Irish border will be handled after Britain leaves the EU. The European Research Group's approach is an alternative to what's been laid out in the government's Chequers plan, and it comes amid renewed questions about the support the Prime Minister can command. It includes simplified customs procedures to avoid the need for checks at the border, similar UK and EU regulations. The time is a quarter past six. Our top story this evening. Conservative Brexiteers have set out their ideas for how the Irish border might work after we leave the EU. And the half a million pound jewellery heist at a luxury Perthshire hotel. Two men are convicted. Coming up on Sports Day on BBC News, David Weir opens his heart and says he's coming out of retirement in the hopes of making it to Tokyo 2020. This weekend, it will be 10 years since the collapse of Lehman Brothers Bank, a key moment in the unfolding of the global financial crisis. In the period that followed, share prices plunged, the banking system teetered and millions lost their jobs. The impact can be seen even today. Research carried out for the BBC has shown that real annual wages are £800 lower than they were a decade ago. Our economics editor, Kamal Ahmed, reports. Keep up some warm tropical air and uh, move it towards southern parts of the country. So as we go through the weekend, southern areas will see some sunshine and it will turn a little bit warmer, further north and west cooler with a brisk breeze and some rain at times. Michelle. Ben, thank you very much. That's it from us. Time now for the news wherever you are. Goodbye. Philippine President Duterte is infamous for his brutal war on drugs. Now his critics fear he's returning the country to the dark days of dictatorship. Our world, Philippines Democracy in Danger, Saturday and Sunday at 9.30 p.m. on the BBC News Channel. Follow the story, whatever you're doing, wherever you are.
You can follow every moment in depth with BBC News. Get the full story at bbc.co.uk forward slash news. Get the headlines as they happen with the breaking news alert. And keep up with events by watching the BBC News channel in the app. Follow the story wherever you are with BBC News. Hello, this is BBC News with me, Rebecca Jones. Here are the headlines. Leading pro-Brexit Conservative MPs insist they're not planning to oust Theresa May, despite meeting to discuss alternatives to the Prime Minister's Chequers proposals, including plans to avoid a hard border on the island of Ireland. Egypt's public prosecutor says E. coli led to the death of a British couple at a hotel in the resort of Hagada. The Russian president, Vladimir Putin, says the two men accused of poisoning Sergei and Yulia Skripal in Salisbury are civilians and not criminals. Battening down the hatches, mandatory evacuation orders are issued as several American states prepare for the arrival of Hurricane Florence. In a moment, it'll be time for Sports Day. First, though, a look at what else is coming up this evening on BBC News. And we'll hear how a chart-topping podcast series has brought about new search by police in Australia for a woman who vanished more than three decades ago. How is America preparing for the arrival of Hurricane Florence? We'll be keeping a close watch on the storm's progress throughout the evening. And we'll be asking what the country has learned from the devastation wrought by previous hurricanes. Can Mark Zuckerberg fix Facebook before it breaks democracy? The question posed by Beyond 100 Days, which hears from the journalist who spent the summer with the Facebook boss and picked his brains on everything from free speech to data protection. That's from 7 o'clock. And at 20 to 11 and half past 11 tonight, we'll take a look at tomorrow's front pages. I'll be joined by the deputy political editor of The Guardian, Pippa Crera, and editor of the Politico London playbook, Jack Blanchard. So that's all ahead on BBC News. Now, though, it's sports day. Hello, you're live at the BBC Sports Centre with me, Chris Mitchell. Coming up for you on Sports Day, three to...